Before examining the details of Descartes' ontological argument, I think it'll be helpful to put the to put this ontological argument in the broader context in two ways. First, let's take a look at it in terms of arguments for and against God's existence that we've been considering. And we saw that um, when we're looking at arguments for God's existence, there's sometimes we sometimes refer to them as theological arguments, that is, arguments in favor of the theist. We divided our arguments into two categories. The first was revealed theology, and the only argument that fell in that was the argument from religious experience. And we examined what David Hume had to say about religious experience and about the fact that they're miraculous. He was certainly skeptical about them. And we took a look at it. It seemed that he had you know, some interesting points to say maybe we could resurrect the argument, but we understand the shortcomings of religious experience. Now, to contrast that revealed theology, there's also what we've called, or what we, are, what we will call, natural theology. The idea is it's not a case that God has come down and talked to somebody and revealed hi himself through, uh, and, and the person to whom he's revealed himself has written it down in some scriptures, but rather that there are these general natural considerations that would lead a rational person to think that God exists. And Descartes' arguments for God's existence fall in this context. I mean, the first argument we talked about in this context was a cosmological argument, an argument having to do from causation. And the one that Hume deals with is the standard one, that is that uh, there things now exist, and they are the result of a series of causes. And from that, we had to somehow reason our way to there, have to there having to be a first cause of this whole series, the cause being God. And we looked at several alternatives of that. None of, those, of that <coughs> form of argument, none of those looked very good. The next kind of argument that's dealt with uh, is the argument from design, a similar one, starting from another empirical statement, namely that the world looks like it was designed for a purpose, so if it was, looks like it was designed for a purpose, in all probability it was designed for a purpose, and that designer had to be God. That's not an argument that Descartes really deals with, although he does deal with the cosmological argument, although his cosmological argument isn't about the causes of the things that exist, but rather the causes of his idea of God in particular. Now we'd like to take a look at, or we're going to turn to Descartes' ontological argument. Ontological argument is an interesting kind of argument because somehow from the concept or the definition of God, the argument proceeds to show that God has to exist. That's why it's called ontological argument. Ontological, like ontology, you know, part of metaphysics, the study of what exists. So the argument shows that God somehow has to exist. And this is the argument we're going to take a look at right now. It's the argument in Descartes' fifth meditation. Now, the other context that we should put Descartes' arguments for God's existence in is the context of his overall program in the meditations. Now, the meditations, his stated reasons for writing the meditations are to prove the existence of God and the separation of soul from body, but we looked at it in the context of what it had to say from a, an epistemological standpoint, the standpoint of theory of knowledge. And we saw Descartes started with his methodological skepticism. He doubt, was doubting everything that he could, and in that first meditation ends up with his evil genius hypothesis. In the second meditation, he says, well, even considering where we are with regard to doubting everything we can, and we're going to treat anything that's doubtful as if we don't know it, there are still things that he knows. But not a whole lot. He ends up with a view that we know is solipsism, that the only thing that he knows to exist that, that actually does exist are Descartes, or the, the person himself, and his thought, his, his thoughts, his mental life. Nothing external to the person exists. That's the view of solipsism. 
Now, in order to get to the point where Descartes can claim to know things about the external world or have that scientific knowledge that he wants, he needs to be able to come up to be able to prove that the evil genius hypothesis, that is that there's this evil genius, sort of a godlike creature and that is all powerful and all knowing who deceives us in or deceives Descartes in everything that he believes, we have to find a reason to essentially deny that that's a possibility. And Descartes' strategy is to prove that God exists. Now, if God exists, he's benevolent and could not be a deceiver, and thus be able to reason our way out to the external world. And that's what Descartes is doing in presenting his cosmological argument, his argument that the idea of God has to be caused, and, and that's in the third meditation, and in the fifth meditation, comes back with a second argument for God's existence, the ontological argument, and obviously they're pretty critical in his overall program and where what he's doing from the standpoint of epistemology and what he thinks he can prove in metaphysics. So let's now turn to Descartes' ontological argument.